So I have with me today Matt McClure um, with Artlink 212, um, which is the uh, the creative mentorship that I did at the beginning of this year. So those of you that have been following along in this channel uh, will be familiar with uh, the Tom Cut Sparrow and the, the work that I was doing with those guys. And I know several of you had kind of some questions and things along those lines. And so um, if we get some people here live, then you can ask those questions. If not, you can ask them in the in the uh, chat uh, after. Uh, I'll leave this up. And so, uh, so how you doing, Matt? Hey, Corey. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. Yeah, it's good. I'm excited to have you on. So, uh, so tell me real quick, what what is Artlink? So, Artlink is a 40 year old nonprofit arts advocacy organization. It was founded in an apartment um, by a guy who wanted to help young artists uh, find a a place for opportunity, uh, a place to exhibit their work. And that was 1978. And fast forward to about a year and a half ago, and we started cooking up 212 as the next iteration of that vision, of that idea. And so 212 really came out of so many conversations about connecting emerging artists from all over the country um, originally we were talking Fort Wayne, Indiana, because that's where we're located. But as we started building this creative network of, of mentors and creative professionals, um, something clicked where we saw this opportunity to connect pretty much any artist, um, who's working in a variety of mediums to creative professionals, um, really find a way to advance these individuals and their projects in a way that had not been done before. Yeah, and I, I was one of those uh, remote remote people in the in the incubator there and um, I was paired up with Steve Leeper and uh, and it was it was amazing. It was a great experience. Um, you know I, I live kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I'm not I'm not near uh, you guys and I'm not near. Uh, Chicago or DC or uh, New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco and so um, or Portland and so like these creative hubs um, you know are, are thousands of miles away from me and so when I saw this um, I thought it'd be an interesting opportunity and it, and it, it made my book significantly better um, it's it's a it's a really interesting process um, do you have any do you have any success stories or anything from from the last round I think I think we just wrapped the first time you guys have done this, correct? Yeah, we we literally just wrapped the first session, um, the first six month residency residency section uh, session back in August, and we're in the middle of session two. And some of our session one residents, they had some very ambitious uh, goals, and their projects have moved on to a second session. Um, others like yourself wrapped your goals. Um, in really, really nice ways. Um, and the success stories we're seeing early on, they are what I, what I consider somewhat unique. Um, they are artists who are seeing their work advance faster than it would have before. Um, most of this work takes, in some cases, years to develop. Um, you, ta you look at how long it takes a, a, a pitch Bible an animated pitch Bible to develop a uh, film, a, um, an audio project, a, a, frankly, even a comic book, a uh, graphic novel. And we're seeing several of those projects moving forward faster than we had anticipated. Um, and that's those early successes. Um, in some cases, we're seeing projects move on to rounds that we call the prepping for financing, so prepping to pitch, pre prepping to get, um, in some cases, you know, an investor or grant buy-in. Um, and that's really a special thing to see creative work that's so scattered around the Midwest and around the, around the rest of the country to really have those opportunities that, that did not exist just, well, now 10 months ago. Um, and so that has been, been pretty spectacular. Um, there's one, one young artist who's developing an AR project. 
that is really something special. I can't talk. To, <laughs> I can't talk too much about it. Um, <laughs> but uh, he has seen his project go from ideation all the way to getting some grant funding to develop his proof of concept, and he is now demoing that. He's now working on it, and it's fa it's just fantastic to see that. And that's exactly the type of progress we 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 love to see. And it all comes back to not just the artist having the will and the drive to to really work their their ideas their their, their projects but also to work with somebody who in many cases it has years under their belt and so much knowledge and is helping them refine that to a point where it can actually find its audience yeah yeah that's that's fantastic um yeah, for me, I met with uh, I met with my mentor um, every other week uh, for for the whole session, which is a few months. And uh, and one of the things that I found that was super helpful, and I, I I do this and I set this up myself anyway, but it was nice to have it was nice to have Steve involved. Was whenever you set yourself up for um, a situation where you're accountable to somebody else, um, the the speed of the project, the quality of the project. And the amount of time that you you spend on that project seems to increase, um, and so um, you know I, I I tend to do a lot of work compared to somebody um, you know who who touches their project you know every every couple of weeks or whatever because I'm working on it usually most most days, um, but but even given that I was able to I was able to um, you know get that extra amount of accountability out of out of that which really really helped. But in addition to that, the thing that I found really fascinating was my mentor came from an animation background and I was doing a picture book. Um, and um, what the, the insights that I got from, from him, I mean, drastically altered the project and probably saved me a significant amount of time because uh, we started looking at it from a production. Whereas uh, prior to that experience, I used to do, you know, kind of just a pedal the metal, nose to the grindstone, just work, 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 work. And he was like, all right, let's slow down for a minute and let's get some, let's get some pre-process going, you know, let's get some planning going. Uh, and so it was really good to have somebody who has, you know, put together um, a series of successful large projects say, you know, your work ethic is great, your art is great, but let's, let's slow down because you're going to draw a bunch of pages that you're going to throw away that aren't going to be used for the project because you're not stopping to think about it. And so, so yeah. anyway, it was just one of those things being, being inexperienced where I've only been drawing for uh, about four or five years and I've only been finishing projects for the last year or so. Um, it was super helpful to have a professional with decades under their belt. Um, and, and so art link to 12 for me was, you know, was phenomenal uh, in, in that aspect. Yeah. It's, it's funny you say that there are, there's an idea, that's pretty ingrained, especially in the independent creator world of, I have the idea and I'm just going to go and make it. I'm just going to go right. and do this thing. Um, and we don't often think in, when, when we're in that mindset of, hey, this is my first draft. This is my vomit draft. This is, um, this is the first iteration of that story of that film. Um, and having somebody come in and say hey take a beat take a moment step away from it then look back at it uh objectively that is <laughs> that's huge um yeah one of the best one of the best things i remember hearing early on um from the program 212's uh, co-founder and the the creative network co-chair um laura hilker uh she was talking to me about just the basic process of of taking um, a concept and flushing it out to be ready to present to pitch, and she she said about one project, um, and I will never forget this. She said, "Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's uh, interesting, but I don't know what stories they're trying to tell." Yeah. Um, and that's that's the thing is we see beautiful work all the time mm -hmm. but if they're storytellers that's your first that's your first thing right um, you, you may not be 
the most detailed artist um, on the planet or even the greatest cinematographer or filmmaker. But if you can tell a damn good story, um, then that gets you miles. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I think storytelling is, is, is always king uh, on top of everything. Um, and the interesting thing about it is, is, is it comes so naturally to us uh, until we try to implement it intentionally. And so, you know, we all go through our lives and tell each other stories constantly about how our day is. And, you know, we relate to each other through shared experiences and stories and things. But then as soon as we sit down to uh, to tell a story, you know, there's there's all these flaws. We leave things out. And I think that's where kind of outside voices and, and, and critique and, uh, and and help from more experienced people is, is helpful. So, so, Matt, take me through. Uh, what it would be like so you guys you guys are open for applications right now for the next session um, so uh, g give me a hypothetical there's there's somebody out there who's got um, a graphic novel project or a comic book project in, in some kind of stage what, what kind of stage would that need to be in um, and 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 why would they apply and what would the application process look like yeah that's a great question um, it, the the project could come in a variety of stages it, you could have several pencil pages done, you could have some concept art done. You may have just a great body of art uh, background and uh, a summary of your graphic novel or your comic. Um, what we really want to, want to see in that pitch, um, in that application, is that you know what your project is. We want to see that you have a firm grasp as to what your project is and to what your what your session goals are going to be and that they're somewhat realistic. Um, if you come to us, let's say, and you have a idea for a graphic novel and it's an idea and you have this, this uh, synopsis of it and that's, that's lovely. Um, but you don't have much art and you don't have a completed script. Well, to complete that project in six months is absolutely insane. Um, and so, what we want to see is that you, you know that, hey, this might take longer than six months, but during this residency, my hope is to refine the, the, the script or to complete a draft of the script or any number of things like that. And once you move forward with those steps and assuming that you're accepted, um, which would be wonderful, um, the, the next step is essentially doing those things is to sitting down um, over email or the phone or Skype, uh, Zoom, whatever, and talking with your mentor and laying out a, a strategy, um, a goal uh, sheet, essentially, and knowing what things you're going to be working on each week so that when you hit the end of that residency, uh, you are, you either will move on to a continuation of it um, with continued mentoring, or you're strong enough with your project to move out and and complete it independently. And and the the creative network of two twelve will still be there um, to assist you. Um, that's the great thing about be, you know coming through the the program is it's essentially like an accelerator. It's it it doesn't just leave you. It it helps. Um, it helps guide you towards those fruition points. So the application process is really just simply about know what your project is and you have enough behind it, whether it's sample art, um, concept art, or in process pages, um, concept work, any number of things that um, it, it proves to us that it's it's a strong project yeah the remote residencies or seven as we call them can be anywhere uh literally anywhere you have a strong internet connection um <laughs> uh, and those are really meant for people who like you said um they are maybe geographically a little further away from major hubs uh it, they might be for people who have their own video space and don't need a shared or collaborative studio uh, that all of that is totally okay um, ultimately it's about that mentoring process uh, but to to answer the question about where the the studio is located 
our main studio is located in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah, and I mean, uh, networking today is, you know, is one of the most important things. I think before we went live, we were talking about comic books specifically. Um, and, uh, and there is a lot in comics, uh, just like everything else, that's it's who you know and who you're talking to and, and being able to talk to or pitch the right person or even knowing what to do. I remember when I was um, just starting out, um, I, I didn't know anything. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know that people used brush with ink. You know, I, I was completely unaware of the <laughs> tools, uh, or, or anything. And so, um, it, it was kind of a long road to try to figure a lot of that stuff out, but being able to get to the point where, you know, you're put in touch with somebody who says, Oh yeah, I've done this before. You know, um, let me, let me show you kind of where to go from here and, and that type of thing, um, is, is super helpful. So, uh, so yeah, so what, um, let, me, let me ask you this, what in your, um, what is the, uh, what is the approval process like? So you get a, you get a bunch of submissions, um, you know, you throw in, you throw in <laughs> darts against a wall or, or, or how, how are those projects weighed against other projects? Yeah. Um, so the, the, the approval process or selection process, uh, has nothing to do quite frankly, with, with myself. Um, what, we, what we do is we gather everything um, and we gather all the applications and then we send them out to our creative network. Those are the individuals who are creative professionals, your producers, your artists, animators, um, filmmakers, any number of people. Yeah. And, and they review the work. Uh, they review... Um, all the applications and they give a brief critique. They say exactly what their first impressions are. Um, and then we ask them simply a, you know, yes or no. Um, and if they're on the fence, they'll say, we'd like to see more. And so one of two things happens. Um, if they're not accepted right away, they will either um, be told, you know, I'm sorry, this is, not yet ready, but here are some observations. Um, we, you know, please come, please consider working on these things for your project and resubmitting uh, down the road, um, because we don't we don't believe in in saying no. To be honest, we believe that part of the process is a learning process. Right. So unless something is clearly um, not even re remotely thought out. Um, or put together well, um, you know, we're going to give some constructive, some constructive feedback. Um, and then the other option is you get a, a secondary application where we ask you specific questions. Um, in your case, it could have, I can't remember what it was, but it could have been, uh, have you completed a script? If so, can you send us a sample of that script? Uh, do you have more concept art? Can we see that? Um, in some cases, it might be, can you answer certain questions about the story? And so on and so forth. And that is meant to really give the, the creative network a sense of how, how thought through, how fleshed out is the project? What stage is it at? Is it pre-production? Is it mid-production or is it entering post in which we, I mean, that option could be something where, hey, we're getting it ready to pitch. You know, that could be the session. So every project is at a different stage. And for us, it's the, the application process is about reviewing each one at the stage they're at and then, you know, really welcoming in the, the prospective resident you know, at that point with realistic goals. Yeah. Yeah. So the I, whole process takes about, I would say it takes about um, a month, maybe two months max. Uh, yeah. So this next round, uh, you, the, the residents will know in December um, if they got in or, or not, um, if not sooner. So it just depends on how quickly everyone offers their feedback. Yeah, and, and I will say on the feedback that that was uh, that was a fascinating part and exceptionally valuable, and and even if I didn't get in, 
um, it would have been worth applying just to get that feedback because um, I, I just want to I just want to kind of explain what it is. I wish I had it pulled up here. Um, I should have I should have preloaded my pitch and the feedback that I got. But uh, <laughs> but it was interesting because um, I pitched um, I pitched a, a few pages and then and then a, a basic idea of what the story was um, and um, what I got back was was really encouraging. One um, the comments and the artwork. Uh, you know, very complimentary, um, but not just not just kind of drive by. You know, like, hey, this is great. You know, I mean, it was it was really in depth and and pointed out things that that needed to be improved. Um, and then there was an interesting kind of ongoing discussion in that document that was sent to me about um, different topics that were very specific to the story. And what struck me was um, that there was a lot of time that was put into this feedback. It wasn't. Um, there, there was two things that struck me. One is that it was is a lot of time. As, as a teacher myself, I know how much time it takes to give kind of passing glance feedback, feedback, and then really in-depth feedback. And this is very in-depth feedback. Um, the other thing that struck me was um, that I was very impressed with, with the, uh, the people that were giving the feedback. Uh, it, it was insightful and, and super helpful. Um, and so I got really excited about the program after that. And, and in, that, in that feedback document, I was asked to uh, kind of do a full pitch. There's kind of the application pitch, and then there's a full pitch, and uh, and in that full pitch, you know, I was told, hey, give me, give me some of this and some of this, and and I've got these specific questions, um, and so you know, some people wanted to see what it would look like if it was in color, and other people wanted, um, you know, specific questions about the story and how I'm treating, um, you know, uh, different elements of, of the setting and the characters and things like that, and so it was. It was just just supplying was was really interesting and, and helps the projects as well. So, so when is the when is the application deadline? The application deadline is a week from tomorrow, um, October twenty sixth, I believe. So that Friday. Um, so it's it's all right there on the website. Um, even the questions, um, I believe, uh, for the application process mm -hmm. if you, if anybody had any questions about it um, they can email us uh, they can email myself directly at matt at artlinkfw.com um, and if if they just want to apply everything's right there yeah and so um, you, you can see at the bottom of matt's picture there the the website is artlink212.com um, and, uh, and, and I'll just give a quick testimonial before we sign off. But if anybody has any questions, now would be the, uh, now would be the time to ask them before we, before we cut this, uh, cut this done. And, um, but, but for me, I was able to meet with the mentor. I was impressed with the quality, uh, of my mentor and, um, and it was, it was a super interesting, um, process and, uh, and if you haven't had a chance to set up some sort of form of accountability or some sort of situation where you're getting um, high-level creative um, feedback on your project, this is an excellent opportunity um, to, to do that. And so I would, I would really recommend it. So we've got people in the chat saying that they're going to check it out. It um, doesn't look like anybody else has any other questions. So any, any closing, closing statements before we sign off here, Matt? Yeah, you know, the one thing that I would say is, you know, so many uh, artists, and, I, and I'm saying this from experience myself, when I was in my early 20s, I had this, this really deep hunger to connect with other artists and specifically people who were masters, the you know, master graphic novelists, um, master writers, and because of where I was located, I, I didn't have access to any of those. And I mean, this was even before Facebook. And what came out of that was buying into the idea that you have to be alone to create. And yes, there's a part of it that you need to be by yourself to finish the project, but you should not be required to create in isolation. Right. Um, that, that's the myth that we've kind of fed ourselves. Um, and that's what this is about. This is about breaking that myth in a way. This is about saying that anybody, um, if your idea is strong enough, you you have the right just as much as anybody who's in New York, Chicago, L.A., wherever, to be a part of a creative community. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, thanks. Um, so go check out artlink212.com. Um, there's a section there. You can read about it, um, and they kind of go through. You can look at the mentors. There's a big list of mentors on the site there. Um, and then you can also, uh, there's just a little tab there for application. The application process is, is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Um, and so I, I would take a look at that if I were you guys and, uh, and really consider this. Um, if you want to check out my stuff, you can go to CoreyKerr.com. If you want to see the project that I uh, finished up with Artlink212, you, uh, you can click on that. There, there's a tab there where you can go to the Tongue Cut Sparrow and you can see a few of those pages. Uh, I'm not showing the whole thing because I'm currently shopping literary agents. Um, but uh, make sure that if you haven't subscribed yet that you can subscribe to this channel and uh, hit that little uh, bell so you know when I go live. And uh, Matt has offered his email. Um, and that's, uh, Matt, what's that email again, Matt? It is matt at artlinkfw.com. And that's FW as in Fort Wayne. Okay, so that's matt at artlinkfw.com. If you have any specific questions or you want to reach out and begin networking with Matt, uh, he's a good guy to know. And uh, thanks for joining in. And we'll catch you guys later. We're out. Thanks.